All right, welcome everybody to our webinar today. This is going to be entitled Technology as a Talent Consideration in Your HR Strategy. My name is Kevin Grossman, I'm president of Talent Board. We'll get to more of that in just a second. I wanna welcome you all and thank Wilson HCG for being a longtime supporter of the Talent Board program and also the presenters on today's webinar. We've got a great interactive discussion ahead. We're gonna talk about lots of really important things that are empowering HR and recruitment today from a technology perspective. First and foremost, I wanna just talk a little bit about Talent Board for those who aren't familiar. Talent Board is the first nonprofit research organization focused on the elevation and promotion of a quality candidate experience. And since 2011, we've been doing benchmark research every year with employers around the world in companies big and small across industries. And first they self-assess themselves in recruitment and what they're doing in candidate experience and how they see their candidate experience. And then in turn, they target a population of their own candidates, asking them to give feedback to them as the employer in order for the employers to hopefully you know, improve upon those things that aren't working out from the perception of the candidate itself. And it's all about the impact on the business and the brand over time. That's what our research helps companies with today and to improve that journey as candidates. We've all been there. We all know what it's like to be a job seeker, even in a competitive market as we're in today um, around the world. So that's what Talent Board is all about. And Wilson HCG has been a longtime supporter of this program, and we wanna thank them for their support. So now we're gonna meet the team that you're gonna be hearing from today. First, again, my name is Kevin Grossman, president of Talent Board. And now I wanna say hi to the great team from Wilson HCG. First, we've got Gary Cook, Chief Technology Officer. Gary, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you for coming along this afternoon. Um, my name is Gary Cook. I have a 30 year uh, background in software engineering, the last 12 of which have been spent in the HR and HR technology space. Um, in that time, I've designed and built uh, a lot of HR technology, and I guess I'm poacher turned gamekeeper now in that I don't build it anymore, but I, I avidly consume it. So um, looking forward to the discussion this afternoon. Thank you, Kevin. Excellent. Thanks, Gary. And then we've got Libby Herman, Client Relationship Director for North America. Libby, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Kevin. And hello, everyone. Um, I am Libby Herman, and I've enjoyed the privilege of partnering uh, with all of our clients here at Wilson HCG over the past six plus years, and also with our delivery team and partnership integration uh, in efforts to drive you know, the optimal talent ecosystem. So thanks again for having me today. Excellent. Thanks, Libby. And then, of course, last but not certainly not least, Stephen Gilbert, the Vice President for EMEA Client Solutions at Wilson HCG. Well, Stephen, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. And again, sort of um, really looking forward to discussion today. So not as many years as Gary, but um, 20 years in the industry. So various HR um, and senior leadership roles in different staffing and RPO organizations and have been responsible for both selling and also solutioning and implementing a wide variety of um, RPO and recruitment uh, solutions with technology um, across, um, across the globe and in um, every region as well. But as I say, so really looking forward to the discussion. I would say that I would call us old dogs in the space, but I, maybe it's better to say seasoned, right? Seasoned. <laughs> seasoned's a better word. Uh, all right, so again, thanks for, uh, for Wilson for presenting today. They are a global recognized talent, total talent solutions provider, and they do lots of great things, both on the, the contingent as well as the permanent employee side when it comes to um, RPO. So you can see a lot of their capabilities here on this slide. We want to thank them again for presenting on today's webinar. So let's talk a little bit about the agenda today. So one of the things that we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna look at market trends. We're gonna take a look at the market trends impacting you all as business leaders today, your business strategy and your people right now. We're gonna talk, of course, about technology. We often look at technology as an HR tool that we implement, and today we're gonna examine it from a, a different angle as an extension of our talent pool, which I really love that angle as well. Uh, we're going to talk about challenges today. We'll also take a look at some of these unique challenges that organizations are faced uh, in all this technological change that seems to be coming at us faster and faster every year. And of course, we're going to talk about the future, which is always now, right? The future is always now, but we're going to share some predictions on what that future holds. So we want to make this session as interactive 
and informative as possible for you. So we're not gonna wait to the end to answer your questions. If you've got questions, feel free to submit them either to the Zoom Q&A module on your Zoom platform, or you can also even use the chat box as well. Either one, whatever you're more comfortable with to submit questions for us and throughout, and we'll make sure to get to those at, uh, periodically throughout the presentation that we're gonna have for you. Also feel free to tweet any of your insights if you'd like, and you can uh, leverage the handle at WilsonHCG, as well as use the hashtag TheCandies, T-H-E-C-A-N-D-E-S. We'd be happy to do that for those of you that are socially inclined and like to share, share the knowledge bombs on, on the Twitters, as the kids say. I don't know if they say that, but I'm saying it now, so there you go. And so before we dive into examining uh, technology's role in HR strategy, we're gonna take a step back and look at all the factors forcing us as HR and talent leaders to rethink those said strategies today. And with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Stephen, who's gonna share some insights on a couple of the market trends that we're seeing at the moment. Stephen, take it away. Great, thanks, Kevin. And um, yeah, I think before we delve into the details and sort of talk about kind of the role of technology and the future of technology, it's, it's always worth sort of taking a, a step back and, and having um, a bit of scene setting. Um, because I think, you know, it's probably true for all of us that we're all finding there are several dynamics in the market at the moment that are affecting all of us. Um, and, you know, whether, you know whatever strategy that you have or whatever product or service or sector that you're operating in you know there are certain sort of common aspects I think that um, we're observing that um, are really driving a change in the market um, as Kevin said I mean feel free to um, pose questions in either the chat box or the Q&A um, section of Zoom but it'd just be really interesting to kind of um, for everybody to perhaps give a bit of feedback um, as to the four, the four trends that we're seeing here. So the first one being, you know, political factors. Um, the second, social and economic factors. Third, customer buying behavior. And the fourth, speed of technical, technology change. And I think so the, the thing for us is that we're finding that all those factors are really affecting businesses' ability to um, both set and deploy strategy but also start thinking about sort of how technology um, fits all of those. So if you've got any observations or you're finding any of those are really affecting your business, it'd be really interesting to hear from you in the, the chat box. Uh, next slide, please. So just to go in a little bit more detail over those four trends that we're finding. I think sort of starting with political, um, and we're all seeing unstable political dynamics at the moment, and that's really affecting confidence in markets. So, for example, aspects like trade discussions between the US and China, um, and we've seen that escalate over the last couple of weeks, um, as well as the UK with um, Brexit and the uncertainty there, they're all um, causing uncertain market landscapes. Um, and we're finding that businesses are having to make very forward thinking decisions. I think every week we're faced with um, global threats, and whether it's over climate change or emerging political threats, you know, we are finding these events are causing serious disruption to markets and business alike. So then moving on to social and demographic, um, and aging and multi-generation workforce, we've all heard a lot of times before, and you know, if you go to conferences or webinars like this, and everyone's talking about skill shortages and aging workforces and the role of education and, and really bridging sort of education with business needs. But I really, I guess the real prevalent question to ask is, you know, what does it really mean? I mean, just to give you an example, so Germany, with the shifting workforce di demographics, by 2030, will have a skills gap of some 30% between the skills needed and the skills available. And that will really mean that companies are going to need to consider mobility um, and cross-border um, and tackle education at a very early stage to develop children's interests and the skills required for the future. You know, that's, for example, why uh, Germany has a change in policy to increase migration into Germany. Obviously, as part of the EU, at the moment, the UK can participate at the moment in migration across countries. But following Brexit, well, what will that really mean? It's not really been decided yet, as we know. And what's the impact of companies that need to utilise migration and people across borders as a way to meet the talent needs of their businesses? So thirdly, customer buying behaviour has shifted. 
With the rise in customer choice and price competitiveness, we're finding that suppliers are now also operating in lower cost markets and providing scale through online trading. And you know, businesses have had to really adapt to the changing consumer demand. We see many cases, and you know, for example, in retail recently, where a lot of companies have started to fail. Certainly in the UK, you know, a lot of retails like Toys R Us, um, and we've also got House of Fraser recently, where you're finding a lot of those businesses um, haven't really found the next trend when it comes to kind of customer buying behavior and operating in a sustainable way with their customers. We're also finding that um, the growing use of smartphones and mobile technology has led to an explosion in customer buying behavior online. And consumer, consumers are really sort of um, seeking a hyper-personalized experience. But, you know, they want to be engaged with companies and purchase products or services on their terms um, and in the, on a device of their, of their choice at the time that suits them. And I think, you know, we find in the recruitment world, this, this same goes for candidates when they're engaging with um, organizations and applying for jobs as well. And then finally, with technology, so advances in technology and data and analytics, I mean, this isn't really a new thing. You know, whatever decade we've all operated in within our careers, there's always been advances in technology, um, but really played an ongoing role in the way that businesses trade um, and advance their services and products. Yeah, I think we, we often allow technology to drive advancement and then try and fit that into business strategy. And I think personally is that there's a danger if we allow technology to drive that, which obviously it often does. You know, there's sometimes is that the strategy of businesses are really dependent on whether the technology um, enables that strategy. Um, and often the technology fails, which can also obviously make the strategy fail. I think the reality for me is that um, you know, any product or service strategy should come first. You know, for me, technology is an enabler for businesses to trade, gain efficiency, scale, and provide innovation to the market. We're also seeing um, technology um, advances bringing unprecedented changes in curriculum for many academic fields. But is it enough? Is enough done to supply the volume of skills needed for the future? And what about the practical skills and competencies acquired outside formal education? A significant portion of the skills that will become crucial to job success in the future are skills that are not ranked amongst the most important today. There will be an increased demand for STEM and digital skills to manage advanced technologies. But moreover, our people will need to become increasingly adaptable and strategic, focusing on higher level activities like problem solving, innovation, leadership, and relationship building. Hey, Stephen. Hey, you Steven. Know, Steven. Steven? Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to jump in before we segue to, to Libby that we did get somebody responding. I think it's important to note that, that um, this person was really more focused on the socioeconomic and political factors that you referenced, primarily because they're in the healthcare industry. And I think that's always important to note, particularly in the States. Yeah. 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 I mean, as I said, I don't, I don't really think it matters in terms of what sector or product or service people are operating in. Um, there are, you know, factors that, you know, across every, every one of those sectors and every one of those kind of, you know, trading conditions, but at the moment it's affecting every business. We're, we're finding that the businesses are really kind of, I suppose, putting together very short term strategies and you know, the longer term strategies before are being adapted. Um, and, you know, we're finding that, you know, I suppose there's much more of a sort of short term view to things. Um, but yeah, I mean, a very relevant um, uh, comment, as you say. Right. So, yeah, I think just, the, I mean, obviously that was just a very high level um, scene setting slide, um, an opportunity to kind of then move it on to sort of say, well, what does that really mean for HR and for us as talent professionals? And I know, you know, Libby, obviously you work very closely with both, you know, Wilson ACG's clients with a lot of experience of kind of that, that client dynamic. So it'd be really kind of interesting for you to, to share your findings and what you're seeing. Thank you, absolutely, Stephen. So we're finding that, as you can imagine, the impact is, is more than significant at this point. In order to you know, truly overcome market shifts and meet business objectives, there's a need now, really more than ever, for 
you know, talent acquisition strategy to evolve and for talent pools to be managed in a more integrated way. We're seeing truly that a lot of our clients and talent acquisition leaders are already putting this into action. Many of these changing market conditions are putting an increased demand on companies to become more flexible and agile than ever before. Just in time recruitment, you know, utilizing those resources that, that you have in your toolbox in key areas at the right time, right cost, right quality, are often the vein of internal TA. Yet, you know, our businesses now demand this. They have to survive and succeed in these very difficult market conditions. We're finding that more and more companies are considerate, you know, considering the outsourced model to partners such as us, you know, Wilson HCG, to achieve the scale and flexibility they need to continue to move their talent uh, planning forward. And as Stephen mentioned, the talent landscape has dramatically shifted and has become increasingly complex, with hiring volumes predicted to increase this year and unemployment rates truly at an all-time low. There is enormous competition for candidates. The magnitude of data um, alone that HR leaders are having, you know, come to them at their fingertips can be overwhelming and puzzling. And it's important that we're using that data properly to help us make informed and predictive strategic decisions when it comes to talent, both from a candidate and employee perspective. Uh, the hiring and retention success is truly substantiated by intelligent solutions to improve the entire process to not only improve the candidate experience and help time-constrained recruiters speed up their processes, but also to truly give leaders greater visibility and real-time updates to make those agile informed decisions. Another key aspect is the, the shortage and demand for key skills. You know, the, the speed of the technological and socio-demographic change is transforming business models and disrupting entire sectors. Technology is, is not only changing the way we find and engage talent, it's augmenting and transforming our people's jobs. So we often hear people talk about technology like artificial intelligence and machine learning, um, digital technology as an HR tool that is implemented into their talent acquisition process. But today we'll look at technology through a different lens as an extension of our talent pool and key consideration in our strategic workforce planning efforts. The core objective of strategic workforce planning, as we know, is to help businesses prepare for the future and meet long-term goals. So again, we'll invite your feedback uh, if you'd like to offer, you know, what extent your organization considers the benefits of human talent and technology working together. Again, we invite you to use the chat box or Zoom Q&A to share your answer. All right, thank you, Libby, so much. So we're going to take a little uh, a little beat and see if anybody has any questions about anything that we've shared today. Um, oh, and in fact, we do have somebody saying, let's back up a little bit on the, the poll question again. So we did have somebody respond somewhat to this on the to the extent organization consider the benefits of a blended workforce comprised of human talent and machine. Somewhat, okay, there you go. I think a question that uh, that I have that I want to pose um, to you, Libby, is the the fact of the matter is we we keep seeing the headlines and this kind of like doomsday uh, uh, effect of AI related smart technologies, robots taking our jobs. I mean that we're that, that are going to be heavily displacing many of us, particularly in the recruitment industry. And I I think. You know, what, what do you think? Is that the case? Is that what's going to happen? You know, we, we predict, um, and it's true, this, this comes up often, um, and, and often it, it comes to us from our clients asking, you know, what we're, you know, what our advice is in the, you know, strategic workforce planning vein and, and trying to help them kind of focus um, where their technology aims would be. And we really predict that technology will, in fact, create more jobs than it replaces. Um, in fact, you know, statistics in a report released by the World Economic Forum stated that technology could create 133 million jobs globally um, in a recent report, while 75 million workers may be displaced. So those headlines, unfortunately, that you mentioned have led to widespread distrust. 
Uh, a recent PwC survey stated 37% of people are worried about automation putting jobs at risk, which is up 33% uh, from 2014. We believe you know, that there will always be a need for human interaction and uniquely human qualities and skills. Uh, in that same survey, 73% of people felt technology could never replace the human mind. Demand for high-level skills um, and competencies based around leadership, thought leadership, innovation, problem-solving skills, and creativity. Um, these types of things will become heightened and there will be an increased need uh, we foresee for human digital skills to help in managing that advanced technology that we implement. Yeah, and I, I think Libby also, I think you, you raise a really great point around distrust in technology. I mean, and again, this comes back to whether the technology sort of drives a strategy or whether actually as a business, you need to have the right business processes, the right HR strategy and change management plans in place. So you know, prior to implementing new technologies to help build that trust, um, we've seen you know, steady progress with trust in, re in recent years. I mean, for example, if you take um, Airbnb or Uber, I mean, for example, how many people now trust kind of five-star online ratings enough to jump into a stranger's car or, you know, stay in a stranger's home? <laughs> Although this may be the case, you know, co companies still, I think, need to be mindful of building and maintaining trust when it comes to technology. You know, I still think that we're decades, if ever, away from the Terminator movie series kind of effect of, of, of artificial intelligence taking over. I, I think the more of the reality of what I see, just like underscoring everything that you've talked about is that we still need, we need the humans to run the robots. Yes. I mean, that's really at the end of the day. And for them to get smarter, better, faster for us to empower more of the HR and recruiting processes that, that need a lot of scale, especially for any co company of any growing aggressive size, mid-size enterprise, especially multinational global cor corporations. Um, you know, the human modern day neuroscience has shown us that we're, A, we're not very good decision makers anyway, no offense to humans, right? But we, we also, we just, we, we, we need help scaling kind of repetitive decision making, right? Deciding who should be, who's more qualified for a job, for example, who uh, helping to answer questions on the career site in order to, with a, the volume that may come in and where there was no engagement before anyway, it's filling a void of communication, which is a big deal about improving candidate experience before candidates even apply. So all those things, I mean, I think are, are we're really on an exciting time for HR and recruiting to help empower, lift the boats more than to sink them, right? Absolutely. So, Let's, let's, um, here's another question that I have. And if you, any of you have a question, throw it that, that our way as well. What are also some key steps to consider when implementing these new technologies, Stephen? Yeah, and again, sort of, um, you know, without being a broken record, it's the same kind of concept. It's really around stressing that technology, you know, no, no technology should really be there for technology's sake. Um, you know, I, I go to a lot of conferences and, um, you know, I'm approached by technology companies all the time. Um, and sometimes, you know, you do get that kind of feeling that, um, you know, technology is really kind of driving the agenda. So they're trying to find a, you know, solve a problem, um, which is great, you know, as an industry, we need to evolve and, you know, innovate. But, but sometimes, you know, you, I think businesses really have to kind of step back and say, well, what, what problems do they actually have? you know, and then, and then to try and go back out to the market and say, look, is there a technology to, to really kind of plug, plug that gap? And again, it comes back to sort of, you know, what's needed, what, you know, what, what is the gap that you need technology to enable? And I certainly find that sort of, um, you know, it's occurring. Uh, yeah, agreed. I was just talking with somebody yesterday about the fact that we get into this, 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 shiny object syndrome cycle where the, you know there's wow there's this great new thing that um that can help us improve sourcing what, whatever that technology is um maybe it's ats crm community whatever the the thing is and we get excited about it and we're like oh we want to implement it but we're not really thinking about what are what are the business problems we're really trying to solve and then you you put some, you know, you get a champion and internally, you, you, you get that piece of technology in and then 
two, then you get in this cycle of this replacement market every two or three years because you'd also, you didn't have any adoption of that, <laughs> of that tool. It was exciting and then nobody used it and then you're ripping it out in two or three years. And wow, what's, what, a, what a waste of man hours and investment. And for, not to speak of just your, your, your bottom line, right? Wow. And I think coming back to that whole experience piece, which, which is where we started talking about, you know, you, you've got to put yourself in that, in that candidate or that end user experience as well. So you may have found, you know, a wonderful shiny object that you bring in uh, and it may, you know, seamlessly integrate um, from a data perspective into your architecture, but you've got to think about that user journey as well. Uh, and, and having something that comes in, um, and gives a disruptive you know user experience or a disruptive candidate experience or or just you know it it, it might work for you but it has to, you know coming back to Stephen's pro, uh, point it, technology is not a silver bullet and that's a, an odd thing for a CTO to say but it, it really isn't and and it should never be for technology's sake you should always start you know with that business problem and then you should carefully examine um, you know, the, the right tool for the right job and make sure that it doesn't just do that job, but you, you've got to look at it holistically and you've got to look across your entire, um, you know, user journey and make sure that it's, it, it fits you and your brand and your culture as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, speaking of that, we're going to talk further about technologies because I'm really interested in, in picking Gary's brain on the evolution that he's witnessed over the past decade, particularly in, in HR usage as well as HR strategy. And uh, Gary, I, I know I had the pleasure of, of having you on the Talent Board Candy's podcast that I do recently, and mm -hmm. that was a great discussion as well. So why don't you share some of the major shifts that you've seen of late? I will do. And you know, 10 years is, is a geological age. Uh, yeah. 10 months would be a long time. In technology, <laughs> right. But, but 10 years is, so I mean, look, you know, we've 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 seen uh, an, an expansion of of the internet, and you know globalization of the internet. We've seen a uh, prolifer proliferation of devices that will now you know connect to the um, to, to the web, and we've seen cost driven down. And this has had um, I'll focus on on three things, and then I'll talk about some um, some technology that that, that solves some of this. I think we've gone from um, what I call a kind of a, a cattle grid uh, mode of hiring, where you know. You, you applied to a company website, you filled in a form, you took an awful assessment, which had a thousands of um, similar questions, but you did that because that was the only way of applying. And, and you probably did that from a desktop computer. And now, you know, we've moved on. It, it, technology is um, proliferate in our lives. It's, 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 it's soaked everywhere uh, into, into every part of our, our daily routine. Um, and and it's a it's a candidate driven consumer driven market now. So we have this um, you know we have this playing field where you know candidates especially want this sort of almost hyper personalised um, experience where they connect with you on their terms on a device that they want to use through a channel or a medium that they want to use at a time that suits them. So we've gone from a sort of a very regimented approach to this kind of always on, you know, I could drift past your website at three o'clock in the morning. And if, if I can't engage with you or if I can't get the information I need, I'm gone, you know, I'm, I'm off the hook. I think um, uh, but coming off the back of that as well, we, we see an explosion of data, we've mentioned it already, but all of these interactions, all of these different tools that we have now through, you know, right through from the very top of the funnel, right through, um, you know, to, to, to onboarding and beyond, um, is, is generating huge, vast amounts of data um, that, that we, that, you know, we're struggling to, to, to process in its, its singularity, let alone as a consistent picture. And then, you know, finally, I think that like every um, organisation, every team, we're, we're expected to do more with, you know, perhaps less. So we're expected to make... Um, make processes faster, make, uh, you know, seat time shorter, make hiring time shorter. Um, but we're doing it, um, all to, you know, with, with the assistance of technology now. So I think, I think you know, like every uh, industry, I think the, um, the rise of the internet proliferation of devices has, has driven this, um, this hyper-personalised desire in, in the candidate. I think that's the biggest shift for me. Um, so... If we look at some key technologies now um, that are helping solve 
um, some of these uh, changes. And I know we've spoken about, I won't say the dangers of, of, of AI, but the um, possibly, the, I guess, the perception of AI. You know, we, we can't get away from it. And, and in the same way that um, I remember when, you know, internet recruiting became a thing, mobile recruiting became a thing, you know, AI will go from being something is a, which is a nice to have to it will be baseline it will be built into into that process but it's there not to replace you know the robot overlords aren't aren't here to destroy us and i hope that skynet prediction kevin is a lot further off than 10 or 20 years um <laughs> but uh you know AI, AI, ai can help but you know so and again all the way across that that pipeline but it should it should augment the process it should assist it should be helping uh never forget what the h stands for in hr you know this there should always be a human controlling that process but you know to your point um ai can help us make those decisions faster it can it can fill those gaps so it can be a a, um, a receptive kind of fun to engage with chatbot at the start of the funnel or it can be analyzing thousands of pieces of data and making recommendations and i don't think we can get away from from ai and i think it's got a, a, a an, a, an interesting part to play um as we move forward moving on from that you know automation rpa um it's an it's an offshoot of, of ai as i see it but you're probably seeing you've, you've probably interacted with it without knowing so if you've ever applied for a credit card or a, or an overdraft or um you've, you've called a call center there's a good chance that uh rpa um has been involved in there somewhere this this is where we can take we look at something like an overdraft application where it would have had to go off to a human to look at it we can now build rule sets into systems um, with decision paths that, that take care of that so that gone are the days of you know applying for a bank loan and maybe waiting five or six days you can usually get an instant decision and that's thanks to to rpa and then data and analytics you know i, I don't think there's anyone on the call um, that, that, that can't share a story that you know they they've got so much data and they just don't have the the, the time to um to, to process it all and, it, and i think in many organizations it sits in stagnant pools um you know not interconnected not um not mining the true worth of that so that's why i think we've seen this this huge explosion in in you know uh predictive analytics and analytics and data modeling tools next slide please so quickly just looking at where um where you know hr technology is being implemented uh in 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 uh hr's talent strategy today obviously there's a lot of focus on the talent acquisition piece and rightly so there's been this huge and for me very exciting explosion of, of technology there but we are seeing it used in talent talent planning looking at workforce um planning who who should we be hiring where should we be hiring them um, talent development and engagement. There's been some great advances, especially around um, internal mobility now and bringing AI into that. If you've seen things like IBM's career, um, career coach tool. And then obviously finally talent acquisition itself, um, where we see this, as I say, this explosion of, of, of new technologies almost on a daily basis now. Um, everything from you know, sourcing, screening, hiring, but all designed really to um, you know, this is a saturated pond that we're all fishing in, right? And and good technology, um, carefully implemented, should allow uh, recruiters and hiring managers to be the first to those candidates to engage with them in a very meaningful um, manner, in a way in which the engages and draws the candidate in, and then provides as much information in that short space of interaction that we have with the candidate um, about them, so that they've got they know, you know, this is the, this isn't just a, a great candidate from their resume, but you know, we know that they fit our organisation culturally. We know more about them from background, and we can make more informed hiring decisions as a result. Excellent. Let's take some questions now. If you've got a question, folks, throw it our way in regards to this. I've got one here. Um, so, where do you all see advanced technologies like AI, automation, machine learning, and the like? making the most significant impact on recruiting in particular and of course candidate experience in the next five years anyone i'll take this one first and if i can sure. 
So I, I think that the, um, and you know, there, there's always been a bit of a, what, what candidates called the black hole. Um, you know, you, you apply and then you wait to hear back, you have an interview and you wait to hear back, you try and reschedule an appointment and you wait to hear back. And I know these sound like simple things, but I think technology can come and, and, and plug that uh, gap. So to your point where there wasn't anyone to contact before, there wasn't anyone to, to ask questions about before, I think that um, you've got uh, uh, technology now that can that can engage with really chatbots, smart chatbots that can engage at the front of the pipe. You've got um, smart rescheduling software now that can you know uh, handle multiple diaries, cancellations at the drop of a hat, no need to call up and uh, and rebook, saving time for everyone in the process. And I think then from the you know from the recruiter's perspective, as I just said, having that. Um, that, that high level data uh, and, and more of it and, and meaningful so that, that um, you know, I'm looking at my candidates, but it's stack ranked now, it's telling me who's most likely to move, who's, you know, right for this job, who's got the best skills, the best, you know, personality, the best cultural fit. I think that's where uh, we'll have a big impact in a, in a very short space of time. I think the other thing, the interesting thing is, Gary, and again, sort of from, from talking to lots of different companies is that, there are industries and sectors that have already got this right. You know, if you look at Amazon and you order something yeah. from Amazon and it's, you know, it comes within sort of 24 hours, your text sort of six times during the process of it coming to you, you know exactly when it's going to arrive, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, as an HR and recruitment industry, surely you should be going to those kind of industries to really kind of learn from that or even use the technology they've already developed. It sometimes feels like in the, in the HR industry to kind of try to recreate the wheel and start from scratch. We actually have another question as well from Victoria who asks, in my experience, RPOs demand more from their technology partners with corporate clients with in-house rec teams are much more comfortable to be led would you agree and if so what do you think that is you guys understand the question i think i think it's a it's a great observation um, yeah. victoria and we we do demand more from um our technology partners primarily because you know we we have to operate in 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 so many different markets we have to operate in 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 so many different um uh, in, you know, market environments, technology environments, and so, and, and we have to speak in a thousand voices. I mean, if you, for example, if you hire, if you went out and bought an ATS tomorrow for your company, it's serving your company. If we go out and use a piece of technology, we have to use it for a, for a dozen different clients. So it has to have that kind of uh, multi-tenant, multi-faced um, capability. Um, and and we make a huge investment not only in in um, you know, R and D uh, and looking at these technologies, but in, in training of our own staff and something that clients sometimes can't um, afford to do. So we are coming in almost like a, like a you know, like a SWAT team. Heavy, you know, we've, we've got the right tools. We've got a lot of experience of using those. And we've, we've, we've seen a lot of, um, uh, you know, different um, uh, environments and scenarios. So it's, I think it's some of that experience coupled with that, you know, high demand that we place on technology, which is, which gives us that, um, you know, that that subject matter expertise and that thought leadership. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, that's a great response. So now we're gonna we're gonna keep the conversation moving, and we've explored technology's current usage in HR strategy. Now we're gonna take a look at technology from a different perspective, and um, as as an extension of your talent pool today. So we're gonna segue back over to Libby and take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, yeah, so obviously, it, you know, the imperative is really finding that right balance between um, people and technology. Uh, candidates in the market is, you know, they're demanding high touch communication as we've just talked about. And, you know, in terms of, of reaching um, a time when humans and machines work in harmony, we believe that's very much the future. In fact, 52%, as you see here, 52% of CEOs are exploring the benefits right now of humans and machines working together and are already putting some of that into motion. Um, so as we move to the next slide here, we're gonna look into you know, what your organization needs to be considering before you, know, you get to that point. You need to you know, make a several different determinations. The first being, 
uh, where your organization will benefit most from the technology um, and where human interaction is still integral to the success of your business model. Within this, you'll want to examine the trends impacting your workforce, assessing the impact across the business, and then working with leadership to determine where AI and automation might help your business achieve a competitive advantage. Uh, from there, you know, looking into scenario-based models to forecast the size and composition of your future workforce. And then looking into, you know, the technology um, that is ahead of us and in front of us today and how that might change the skills your organization needs for future growth and success. Once you have this understanding of the trends impacting your business um, and the visibility on your company's technology roadmap, then you can begin to really identify the skills required two to five years down the road and begin mapping that, that talent that's going to be required to, to support the technology. You've got to identify the talent gaps and as you know, the technology shifts into this new role, working alongside of our human talent rather than a tool used by human talent, uh, your people will then move into more strategic roles focusing on higher level tasks. The next step is truly to evaluate how your organization is going to address those talent gaps. Can these skills be developed within your organization or are you going to have to go to market in search of these critical skills and what are we doing today to look into that succession planning? And then thirdly, how are you going to find, attract, and develop people with skills and scarce supply? You know, defining a workforce strategy to bridge the gap between the skills and capabilities your organization has, whether those are human or techno technological, with the future skills required, keeping the technology your organization plans to implement in mind. You'll also need to establish a transformation strategy to complement your workforce strategy to address the following questions. Is your HR strategy designed, number one, to effectively manage a blended workforce of both human talent and machines? And, and secondarily, are your business processes then in a way, uh, are, are your business processes designed in a way that promotes that seamless marriage between human talent and technology? Um, we think, you know, viewing technology through this lens will provide that more holistic approach to modern HR strategies. Absolutely, Abby, thank you so much for sharing that. We're gonna actually keep moving and, and jump to challenges with Stephen now, just as um, keeping a, a, our mind on the time to make sure we get this great content in. So we'll get to the, we'll get to the questions in the next round, but Stephen, why don't you take it away? Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, essentially is that we've, we started to talk about some of the sort of key challenges as part of the, you know, the Q and A sessions. And, you know, this could be kind of an hour in itself as a, as a topic. So, I mean, just to be very brief, I think, you know, first kind of consideration we see is accessibility. And we think the technology should be right, kind of as inclusive as possible to everybody, um, irrespective of their device location or, or ability. So that's the first one. The second one is around reducing bias. Um, so as machine um, intelligence evolves and continues to advance, you know, we really have to kind of think about how we're using our AI and really kind of that machine learning um, to ensure that it isn't, you know, it is kind of um, reducing bias. Um, and then the third um, one is around kind of user experience. And again, it goes back to my example of um, how certain industries have really kind of advanced that user experience and how people feel about the product or service they're buying. And I think we just need to be conscious, certainly with kind of an HR and, um, you know, the recruitment world, that we're really, you know, using technology to enable user experience as much as it can be. And I know some Gary starts to sort of talk about that as well. So, so yeah, so that's um, really kind of a summary, I think, some of the key challenges that, you know, us as HR professionals would be really thinking about um, as you kind of think about your technology strategy. Excellent. Thank you so much, Stephen. Now we're going to, now that we've taken a look at how technology is playing that role in HR strategy, let's, let's predict the future. You, Gary, you got your crystal ball handy? You got it right in front of you? Uh, okay. Um, well, I, I, I don't think I'm going to surprise anyone by, by talking about <laughs> AI again. Um, you know, I, I think that we, we've got low unemployment. We've got, um, you know, technology marches on daily. And, and I, I think that, you know, as I said earlier, this won't be a nice to have or a, an addition to your armory. This will be the baseline, I think, of, of your armory. Uh, secondly, I think we're going to see uh, one of my personal predictions is, is a rise of voice as the new UI. Um, you know, we, we, we see it in our cars. We see it 
in our homes and and i you know i i don't think it'll be very long um before we're asking alexa to find me a you know java developer job in a specific location i i don't think we're far off that at all and then finally you know the, i guess the, the theme of of um of the, of the webinar today i think technology will become an extension Oops. see that i should never talk about alexa with alexa in the room um uh, so technology will become you know an extension of the talent pool um uh, and central you know to uh, strategic workforce planning um and i think this shift will enable corporations and organizations uh to be prepared for the future and and blending that that technology in there having them as a, an extension of talent pool will, will will help them achieve their uh, you know their business goals so so <laughs> gary i'm sorry i i'm only laughing because we've got just really quick we've got <laughs> One of my my oldest daughter's really good friends is named Alexis. Oh yeah. And anytime that she's over and we're saying her name, <laughs> uh, uh, I, Alexa says, "How can I help you?" And we're like, "No, not you." Alexa. As if to underline my point, could it could it be? <laughs> there we go. That's how. That's there you how go. Right. That's the power. That's, that's the power of. Power. That's the power of it. So, I thought Alexa was going to find me a Java job there for a second. That would have been <laughs> wow. You really there you go. So let's 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 then speaking of voice activated. Yeah, Gary, I activate you to talk about conclusion and takeaways. Okay, so I, I think I'd summarize three key takeaways. You know, technology isn't a silver bullet. Again, odd for a CTO to say, but it is an enabler. It is the grease that turns the wheels. You should be achieving business success because of your technology, not despite it. So, you know, human interaction will always be essential. The H in HR. Uh, number two, uh, it's not just a tool. Um, you know, it should be part an integral part of your your planning, um, your business planning, your HR planning going forward, it will um, cause a profound shift in the human skills required to achieve future business success. We know, you know, forget about the jobs that it might erase or the or the tasks that it might take away, but think about, you know, the hundreds and thousands of jobs that technology will create, um, and not just now, but in the years to come. And then, you know, experience, experience, experience. Technology is only as good as the experience it provides for the for the end user, be that an internal user or be that a candidate. Um, you know, we have to we have to put ourselves uh, in the shoes of of that candidate, and we have to make sure, you know, as we touched on accessibility, that that we don't run downhill and we don't get so distracted by the shiny objects that we forget about that experience and we forget about how accessible that experience is, and and that as we design these fantastic systems and we implement them, you know, we make sure that everybody uh, is along for that ride. Gary, thanks so much for that. Now, any final questions, anybody? I actually have one because we've talked about a lot of stuff. We've talked about a lot of technologies that are actually helping to impact and improve and empower all those buzzwords that we have shared today, HR and recruiting alike. So I'm gonna ask all the panelists and for just to, where would be, um, an area for, let's say, high growth, mid-size uh, to larger organization, where should they, where would be kind of an easy win for some of the AI related technologies that are implemented? And let's kind of reiterate and focus in on where do you recommend they should be looking at? Yeah, I mean, I can start with that, Kevin. So, um, and actually, I think a lot of um, people using AI without actually realizing AI. And I think that's something Gary sort of talked about with automation as well. You know, when you look at what LinkedIn is doing and some of the, you know, the AI behind that is, is quite astonishing, although we kind of use that, uh, LinkedIn and it just kind of works for us. So I think, you know, I don't think it's kind of looking at sort of how AI can really kind of help your strategy. It's kind of embracing AI and finding, you know, parts of the, you know, your strategy or process that AI is really going to kind of, you know, make life easier for, for you. I mean, one of the, you know, things that we talked about was data and analytics. You know, it's a big thing around kind of workforce planning. Um, so not just obviously looking you know, backwards in terms of hiring data and trends, but, you know, trying to use the data and analytics and AI to really help kind of, you know, future thinking as well. So that would be, I guess, my, my, my take on AI at the moment. And I would add to that, um, that anything, you know, coming from a client's um, mindset and what we hear often and more often than not is truly around how can we ensure that we are disrupting the market and attracting this very, 
um, you know, highly demanded talent pool, often niche skill talent, and in many cases, talent that's not being uh, redeveloped, um, as we've talked about today. So finding those areas where we can harmonize, you know, the human interaction with technology to enhance the candidate experience and further add competitive advantage for our clients in their recruitment, the better. Yeah, I would, I would just, you know, I, I, I think I've mentioned all of these things, you know, during the, the, um, the webinar, but I, I think that looking for, um, start with a problem, you know, don't start with the technology. I think that's, that's a great, great advice. There will be, there will be things that you're doing in your organization that can be, um, that are repetitive, um, or there are, there are areas where it's just going to take so long to do it. If we look at, you know, interconnecting those stagnant data pools, um, that I spoke about. So, so that's, that's where I think, it, you know, we've got the, 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 your hiring experience, we've got the candidate experience and then we've got, you know, um, taking the, the load off of the shoulders of, of people and, and freeing them up, actually using that time to be more productive. Um, and don't give them the nuclear launch codes. I think that's the, the last bit of advice I'd give you as well. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, yeah. and I, we can, let's, let's queue, queue up Alexa again. Come on, Gary. Let's, <laughs> let, so, you know, you know, I'll tell you, to add to that is, and I was, it's actually an article I just wrote that we're going to push out either today or tomorrow on, on a talent board site. But it relates to the idea uh, around when you're dispositioning, i.e. rejecting, uh, interview stage candidates, right, of where almost 60% of this year in, in the talent board data and research um, are being dispositioned still by automated email yet at the interview stage. And it's only 22% are getting an actual personal email and only 10% are getting a phone call from recruiters and hiring managers. And this conversation I had with a very large consumer-based company yesterday, uh, one of the candy winners this year, as well was around you know they really want to empower the recruiters to you got to get on the phone more with these folks especially at that stage and i think a lot of what we're talking about can help actually again free up that time to make those things a priority right because that goes miles in candidate perception and experience for those future fit and silver medalists to potentially come back and as well as refer and as well as make purchases or influence purchases if and when applicable, right? You all think? I agree. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So on that note, I want to go out with the drum roll because Libby, we, before we started this webinar, she um, is also a fellow musician and, and a drummer. I'm a hobbyist drummer myself. And I can tell you, I want to end on the note that I would always rather have a real human drummer, even on electronic, even on electronic drums, than a drum machine, right, Libby? That's fabulous. Yes, agreed. <laughs> Absolutely. So that said, everybody, thanks so much for having fun with us today and being here and, and learning. And hopefully, we had a lot of great takeaways for you. And we'll see you all on the other side. We will make this recording available as well. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.